All right, what's going on guys? Tosker here and in this video we're going to create our dialogue service. Um, after that we just need to set up some bindings and then make our JSON contact service. So basically uh, and hopefully we only have one more video in the series after this. Moving on, what we want to do next is go over here to our services. We want to add a new item which will be an interface. Add a new interface and we'll call this the I dialog service. Then over here we want to create a public interface. And this might not be completely necessary, but I wanted to do it just for the sake of if you guys wanted to use your own uh, dialog service, it's kind of a way to separate our view models from an actual view. So it's going to be pretty simple. We're just going to have a string called open file and we'll be able to pass it a filter and we'll simply close that off so it should we're going to basically have this return the image path and just to give you an example we could also uh, just for fun I actually don't think we're gonna use it but just to give you an example of what we can else we can do with this interface we're gonna do a show message box string message now we want to go back over here to our solution Explorer go to services and add a new class and in this class, we're just going to call it Window Dialog Service. Because we're going to be using the Window Dialog Service, of course. And then over here in our Window Dialog Service class, we're going to make it public. Going to give it an interface of the iDialog Service. Of course, we want to implement the interface. And then here in our open file, we just want to do a var dialog equals new open file dialog Whoops. of course import the win32 namespace and then we want to do if dialog show dialog equals true which means the user selected a file and hit OK and we want to return the file or rather dialog file name and then if the user is canceled, then we're just going to return a null value. I'm going to leave this not implemented. If you feel you want to ever use a message box or if you just want to take it out completely and remove it from the interface, you can do that as well. I just wanted to give that as an example of what else we could do with this uh, service. Now going over here to our view models, we're going to find our contacts view model. Then down here, we're going to create another command going to have it be a public i command browse image command then going to implement it and now that we have that implemented here is where we are actually going to want to access our dialog service now if we don't have that and I don't really want to instantiate just in this class in case for some reason we ever want to use it elsewhere so we're going to implement it the same way we did here with our data service. So going over here to our Solution Explorer, we want to go to our app view model. We're going to come down here. We're going to create a dialog service. We're going to pass it to our book view model. And of course, we're going to have an error. So we go over here to our book view. And here we're going to accept a I dialog service. I'm going to create another private I dialog service here. Now we're actually not going to be using it in our book view model. We don't need to have it here, but I'm going to keep it here just in case I later want to. For example, if I want to maybe do message boxes for loading contacts if there's an error. However, we're then going to go to our contacts VM and pass it a dialog service. And now going over here to our contacts view model. And then here in our constructor, we want to accept an I dialog service. We'll call it dialog service. We of course want to create a class level I dialog service and assign it.
And then next we want to create a browse command so we can browse for an image using this service. And then here in our new method here, remember we also have a can edit because we only want to be able to change the image in edit mode. We then want to do var file path equals dialog service open file and we're going to give it a filter here. Feel free to pause the video and copy that filter. This basically makes it so when we open up the file explorer, uh, we'll only, it'll filter out all other files except images. And then we want the selected contacts image path to equal the file path that was selected. Now of course we need to set up the binding here. So we want to go over here to our views and find our details view. And now go down here to our browse image or our browse button. And then here we just want to set up a command binding to the browse image command. And now if we run our application, now with our application running, can select a contact, can hit edit, can go to browse, and now we can select uh, any image. So let's make him the purple haired guy we see that now it sets our image here it even changes over here in our list we can hit save so now that that's all set up uh, one thing we are missing is adding and deleting contacts so we're gonna go set that up now so now we're gonna go over here to our contacts view model and we're going to set up an add and delete command And of course now add in the methods add, delete, and then the bool method can delete. Now here for our delete we want to actually go to our contacts and we want to remove the selected contact. But now if you remember uh, when we save our contacts we're, uh, we're not saving the observable collection that we're removing from. So we actually want to scroll up here and look at our I enumerable we made earlier. And actually we're going to change this to a list. And we can scroll down here. And we can set this to list. We want to first, this is important, we want to first remove from our data collection here. So our contacts remove selected contact and then we want to remove from our observable collection. Now the reason we want to do it in this order is because we are bound our uh, this is our observable collection and its selected item property is bound to the selected contact. So if we remove it first that's going to update uh, notify a property change on our selected contact and then when we get to this one for example if it was under here uh, once we get to this since it's bound, it's going to be an entirely different thing. In fact, it's going to be null because we've removed it. So we want to remove it from the collection first, then the observable collection, and then we want to save. Next, for our can delete, we want to return a selected contact here. And if it equals null, then we want it to return false. And then if the selected contact is not null, it can return true. So we can only delete something if we have something selected. Now down here in our add method, uh, we're going to go about something in a way that I'm not entirely sure I enjoy, um, but we're going to stick with it for the sake of time and completing the series. It's not too big of a deal anyways. Um, so I figured uh, perhaps I'd like to throw it to you guys to maybe come up with another way that we can do this or a better way that you think to do this. But let's get started so you know what I'm talking about. So the first thing we want to do is of course we want to add a new contact here. And it'll be a new contact model. And then within this we're going to give it some default empty values. So here's our default values. Now the reason I don't really like this is mostly because, especially if we look down here at our phone numbers, uh, we have our string arrays. 
I don't like the fact that we're setting the value of the arrays to two individually because if later on we decide we want more phone numbers or more emails or more locations we got to then come back into the view model and individually change these. I have a few ideas on uh, better ways I'd like to do this but as I mentioned for now I just want to keep it the way it is. Now next what we want to do is go to our observable collection here and we want to add our new contact. We then want to also add it to our data collection. So this is the actual uh, collection of contacts that we are saving. And then by default we do want to set our selected contact to the new contact. So once we add a new one we're going to assume that we want it selected so then we can go over and edit it. Now the last thing we do want to do is go over here to our Solution Explorer, go to our main window, and down here in our XAML we want to implement the commands for our add and delete. So we can copy our edit command that we have. We'll go up here to add. We'll add in the add command. And then scroll down here and we'll add in the delete command. Now that we have our contacts selected, uh, we can remove John Doe. You can see as we refresh, he's still removed. We can also add. We'll have a new contact here. We'll then edit it. Give him some information. And then we can hit save. And then now we have a new contact. And we can even still favorite him, bring him over here. Unfavorite him. So everything seems to be working okay. So guys, that's the end of the video. Uh, I believe we have one more video to go and that'll be just swapping out our mock data service with a JSON data service. That should actually be relatively quick and easy and simple. So just know you're in the final stretch. We only got one more episode to go.